Starring Everett Sloan, Cameron Andrews, and Adelaide Klein in The Cruise of the Cachalot on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Ted Pearson. Uh, for those who are always on the lookout for new and better things, here's good news. More pleasing to the eye and to the purse are the new plastic combs made by DuPont. You can select a comb with sleek lines and gem-like tones that add a dash of color to your purse or pocket, and they're sturdy, too. The new DuPont combs are versatile. The crystal clear colors are molded into strong, smooth teeth that are gentle to the hair and scalp. Combs made of DuPont plastic offer you the kind of quality which makes them better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> The DuPont Company presents The Cruise of the Cachalot, featuring Everett Sloan, Cameron Andrews, and Adelaide Klein on the Cavalcade of America. Tonight, we turn the calendar back a hundred years or so to the days when New York's Erie Canal was the biggest stern thing in the whole darn country, and when gentlemen wore tall hats and canal men told even taller tales. It's a warm afternoon in Albany. A tall-hatted young man named Nathaniel West is passing in front of Willie Sampson's tavern. Oh, wow. Suddenly, there's a commotion within. The doors are swung open, and an old man is unceremoniously ejected. All right, now, all right. Come on, come on. Get out and stay out, you old deadbeat. <coughs> and don't come back. Hey, you danged impudent monkey. I got a good mind. You all right, sir? Here, oh. allow me to help you to your feet. Oh, oh, thank you, son. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Must have tripped and lost my balance. <laughs> there you are, sir. <clears throat> thank you kindly, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... West, Nathaniel West. Uh, you, uh, you ain't from around these here parts, are you? No, I'm from the New York Herald. I'm up here to collect information for an article on the newest developments in transportation. Oh, then uh, you'll be wanting some stories about the canal, won't you? Yes, sir, that's right. Hmm... Say, uh, has anyone told you about Captain Ben Meeker and his $1,000 payload from New York to Rochester? A $1,000 payload on one trip? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm the only man alive that can tell you the true facts of that heroic and exciting story. Well, say, that's mighty kind of you. I'd certainly like to hear it. Well, <clears throat> it all began when Captain Ben Meeker and his barge, the Louisa... <clears throat> you know, it's a <clears throat> funny thing how this climate parches my throat. Would you believe it right now? It feels so dried up. I can hardly speak a word. <laughs> I see. Well, uh, why don't we repair to this tavern? Why, and, that's uh, a right smart suggestion, young man. I lead the way. <laughs> yes, sir. Captain Ben Meeker was the fellow that done the trick. Fine man. Dang fine man. Here you are. Oh, uh, <clears throat> thank you, waiter. <clears throat> That's better. Yes, sir, he started out one spring with a load of ice hauling from Forestport. The day he was to arrive in New York, him and Henry Platt, his mule driver, was a-setting on the deck, smoking and looking up at the sky. Say, what are you worrying about, Ben? That wife of yours inside? Amy, uh, what did I be worrying about her for? Oh, nothing, except that she don't let you draw breath without sniffing at it. And all the time yelling and screeching and making you wash your feet before coming in to eat like there was your hands. Oh, Emmy's all right. True, she don't hold none with imbibing asparagus liquors, and she sets too much store on cleanliness. But I put that down to a family weakness, just like that high blood pressure of hers. Underneath it all, Emmy's got a heart of gold. Uh, no such thing. That heart of hers is solid A number one Vermont granite. Well, anyways, that ain't what's bothering me. You know, I've been trying to think what I can get to haul back. Huh? Now, fertilizer would make a good haul. It's easy on the boat in itself. Oh, uh, Emmy, you'll never stand for no fertilizer on this boat. Huh? Now, listen here, Henry. I'm master of this here barge, and if I say we haul fertilizer, we'll dang well haul fertilizer no matter what, Emmy said. What's that? What's that you said? Oh, uh, <clears throat> hello, Emmy. Did I hear the word fertilizer in connection with this boat? Well, Emmy, I was only sort of considering that... I uh, go and have the boat painted a good, bright yellow with white trim. I fix the cabin up real dainty with curtains at the windows and blue and white cupboards and the best Chinese head on the Erie. And you want a whole fertilizer. Yeah, but I can hardly smell my geraniums now. Well, now, Emmy, there ain't no use... No fertilizer. And that's my last word. 
So what are you sitting there for with dinner waiting on the table? You boys know that pork chops got to be eaten while they're sizzling hot. Now, you hurry up and wash your feet. Oh, see here, Emmy. We don't never wash our feet till supper time. Well, guess I told her. Making a man wash his feet in the middle of the day. Why, well, they ain't hardly had a chance to get dirty yet. My pa used to say there's only one thing to do with a contrary woman. Give her a good hiding with your razor strap, and if that don't work, use a home. Ben, if you was half the man you say you are... Uh-uh. It is getting nice cold. Ain't you got your feet washed yet? I'm a working on right now, Emmy. Not me. By God, I don't eat with my feet, I ain't going to wash them. Well, then you don't eat. Ah, them pork chops sure smell good, don't they, Henry? Yeah. And Emmy's got a wonderful way with fried potatoes. Yeah, I reckon. Can't nobody on the area make apple pie like Emmy can, Henry. Yeah. You know, uh, my feet are kind of dirty. <laughs> You got them stone lines fast, Henry? Got them tight. Yes, reckon they'll hold. You know, every time we get to New York Harbor, there's more dang boats in it than the time before. That sure is. Say, sight all this water makes a man mighty thirsty. I uh, think I'll go down and wet my whistle. Well, that's a powerful fine idea, Henry. <laughs> and afterwards, we'll take a gander at that Barnum's Museum. Right. I hear tell I got some rare new fleets there. Ah, by Gadfrey, I sure wish I had something I could charge folks for looking at. That's the way to make a living. Well, let's go. Uh, hold on, Ben. Ask Emmy, can you go? Ask Emmy? Why in the name of Goshen should I ask Emmy? If I aim to go ashore and educate myself, ain't nobody can stop me. Now, come on, let's get going. Ben Meeker, where do you think you're going? Oh, uh, Emmy, uh, well, uh, Henry and me, we was just a going for a little walk around New York. I know where you're a going, and I know where you're staying. Right here on this barge, Ben Meeker. Well, I'll be getting along. I'm warning you, Henry Platt. If you come back here intoxicated, you'll sleep in the mule stalls tonight. As for you, Ben Meeker, get right back inside that cabin. away behind my back, and you've been indulging again. Not at all, my love, not at all. I'm just a mite stimulated by the sight of that new ten-story building. What's that you got in your hand? What does it say? Oh, this, this, boy, it's a, it's a letter, Ann, for you. I got it over the post office. For me, a letter will hand it over. My star, something terrible must have happened. What's it say, Emmy? What's it say? Well, give me a chance to read it, will you? But... Oh, my goodness. Mama's sick again. She's got the sugar diabetes real bad. Ben, I gotta go home to Boonville. I gotta leave right away. Well, that's nice, Em. What's that? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I'm mighty sorry to hear it, Em. Uh, uh, how are you gonna get there? Have to take a train of cars, I guess. You want me to help you pack, Emmy? No, and you needn't be so all fired and patient to get rid of me, neither. Well, no, Emmy, how can you say Now, you... you listen to me, Ben Meeker. The minute you get rid of that load of ice, you put the money in the box, and don't you dare touch one single penny. No, Em. Not for anything. But especially not for alcohol. Yes, ma'am. And don't you sit down after eating till the dishes are done. And don't you dash use my new chinese set. No, ma'am. And you write out for Boonville as soon as you get your new cargo aboard. Yes, ma'am. And mind you, no fertilizer. Scare every boat in New York Harbor. And pass that jug of cider back this way. Uh, just a minute, Ben. I wonder if Emmy's got to Boonville yet. <laughs> hey, wonder what all that rack's about. Now, there's a whole parcel of boats chasing something this way. Hey, big black thing in the water. Hey, it's heading straight this way. It's a sea something, that's what it is. No, it's a whale. So what's it doing in New York Harbor? I don't know, but it's getting mighty close to us. Better grab a hold of something. It's going to bump into us, Ben. Well, what are we going to do, Henry? It's coming straight at us. Ben, get away from that rail. Sit down. You're liable to fall off. Take a hold of that boat. Well, I got it, but I... Ben, look out. Man overboard. Man over me. I'll be dang busted. Ben, you got him in the eye. Help. Help, Henry. Save me before that critter swallows me up. No fear that Ben. You killed him with a boat hook. This ain't no time for being funny. Give me a hand, will you? Grab a hold. Get... Uh, 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 get...
Thanks, Fred. When you fell overboard, you rammed the boat hook right in the critter's eye. Thunder racing. You killed a whale, Ben. Well, by God. It, it just sort of raised up a thing and died. Well, how do you like that? I'm a whale killer. Hey, hey Ben, wait a minute. Here's your boat coming along, son. Ben Meeker, a whale killer. Hey, yo, this is our whale. Your whale? Why, the critter's mine. I killed her. We set the harpoon in the tail two hours ago. She's been dragging our boat all over the harbor. Yeah, well, that's my boat hook in her eye. And a hook in the eye is worth two in the tail. Well, we took it up for you. Yeah, and chase her right on your boat hook. All right, I'll tell you, gents. I'll make a bargain. How much do you want for all your rights to the whale? <laughs> Ben, how are you going to explain to Emmy what happened to the ice money? I don't know. Uh, what can you do with a dead whale? Well, I'm going to think about that now. Pass the jug, Henry, so I can do some first-class thinking. Are you thinking, Ben? I'm a thinking, Henry. Pass the jug. <laughs> Still uh, thinking, Ben? Still thinking, Henry. Pass it. Henry, I got it. You know what we're going to do with this whale? We're going to heist her aboard this barge, and between here and Albany, we'll dig out the innards. What? What for? Why, so as we can charge people to go inside, just like Barnum's Museum. We'll have a big sign saying, Be a Jonah for a dollar. By God. We'll get a real bugle and a new harness for the mules and a fancy uniform for you. By God, please. Why, Henry, we'll haul this here whale clean up to Rochester. Yes, we'll sir. show them folks something that'll make their eyes pop out. Oh, Henry, I dasn't lose this streak of fast thinking. Pass the jug. <laughs> Coming. Oh, fine. Reckon it never was a whale had his belly fitted out so nice. Not even the one Jonah lived in. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it a marvel? A whole room of matched lumber with a window and a stove and all built inside a whale's belly. You know what I done yesterday? Uh, Ordered a pair of glasses off an oculus. Pair of glass eyes for this whale. Big as apples they are. Hey, that ought to give her a real active appearance. Yes, sir, and I'll stick a flag in her nose. <laughs> You know, Henry, we need something to make this place look a little homier. Huh? I reckon I'll get the curtains out in the cabin and put some of Emmy's chinese set in that cupboard over there. Hey, Emmy will skin you alive and me, too. You know how she feels about them there curtains and that chinese. Now, you listen to me, Henry. Huh? I spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting this whale fixed up real pretty inside, and by gum, no woman's foolish notions is going to stand in my way. I be Ben Meeker, the whale killer. And by get free, if I can kill a ferocious man-eating whale, I reckon I can handle my wife, Emmy. You are listening to The Cruise of the Cashelot, featuring Everett Sloan as Captain Ben Meeker, Cameron Andrews as Henry, and Adelaide Klein as Emmy, on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living, through chemistry. Well, as I was telling you, after Ben and Henry got the whale all prettified up and ready to go, they started off upriver. First time in history that a whale ever come up the Erie Canal. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you. I <clears throat> will take another glass of strap. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, sir, the first stop the boys made was up to Schenectady. People of Schenectady, this is the greatest thing you ever seen for only one dollar. Step aboard and meet a genuine man eating whale. And that champion whale killer, fearless Captain Ben Meeker. Only a dollar, folks, only one dollar. all the commotion. A female fainted inside the whale's belly. That odor's getting too strong, Ben. 
Well, I reckon as the vapors get higher, our price will have to get lower. Uh, citizens of Fort Plain, as a special offer, we're reducing the price to 75 cents. Step aboard, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Your very last chance to see the insides of this real man-eating whale. The price is usually 25 cents, but today we got a special rate, two for a quarter. This is the whale that I, fearless Ben Meeker, with one blow of my trusty harpoon, killed in hang-to-hang back. Oh, but it's nice and peaceful this hour of night, ain't it, Ben? Very pleasant, very pleasant. <clears throat> Ask me the jug, Henry. All right, gum, Ben. <laughs> this was the most exciting week of my life. I've never seen people as crazy to spend the money. Henry, let us toast our success. Hand me two of Emmy's good china cups. Well, there's just one left that ain't broke. Oh. Well, uh, <clears throat> let's have that one, huh? Yeah. There you are, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, didn't have a hold of it. No, no. I was just feeling around for it. You let go of it too soon. Hey, you think I ought to pick up the pieces, Oh, man? no, don't bother. Don't bother. My hands is all greasy. Well, wipe them off on the curtains. They're all streaked with grease. All right. You know, Henry, even though the critter's odors forced our price down to ten cents, you know how much we took in today? No, how much? One hundred dollars and five cents. One hundred dollars. Where did the five cents come from? Fellow with only one eye beat me down. <laughs> Said he couldn't see only half as much as other folks. Say, uh, how about fixing up a dish of beans? Oh, sure. Oh, you mean washing a dish? There ain't no clean ones left in the cupboard, eh? Right? Mm-hmm. Well, I don't crave beans that bad. Uh, just pass the jug back here. Say, it's too bad we've been having so much sunshine. Sure makes the quitter swell up, don't it? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, it was a dang shame having to trim her down today, but it was the only way we could pass under the bridge. Well, <laughs> she ought to hold it together till Rochester. She will. And after Rochester, I'm going to have a thousand dollars clear profit. A thousand dollars. All right, gum, Ben. That's more than I can earn ten years. Ten years. You made it in one week. You know, I'm going to let you in on a secret, Henry. I'm cutting you in for a share of the profits. You are, Ben? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your man never had a more loyal friend. Thanks, Ben. That's mighty handsome of you. Yes, sir. But uh, won't Emmy have something to say about that? Oh, no need to worry about Emmy. She'll probably stay up in Boonville all summer. Hey, gum. When she comes back and finds out what you've been up to... Now, listen, Henry, how many times do I have to tell you? I'm a different man now. I'm fearless Ben Meeker, the whale killer. No man and no woman can tell me what to do. A master of my own life now. And if Emmy tries any of her old uppity ways with me, so help me, Hannah, I'm a... You're gonna gonna do what, Ben Meeker? I'm a gonna take her by the scruff of the... (laughs) Emmy! You low-down conniving rascal. You no good bees aboard. Look what you've done to my beautiful boat. Uh, now, Emmy, Look dear. at this cabin. Look at it. Empty cider jugs all over the place. Dirty dishes. <gasps> ben Mika, where's my best tiny? Well, now, Emmy, we just barred it for the room we built inside the way. You get out here, Emmy Platt. I'll settle with you later. Catch him, I guess, sir. My beautiful tiny inside that stinking fish. Ben Meeker, I'm going to make you and that no-cow Henry flat pay for this your dying day. It's a blessed thing I came back when I did. Now, the first thing you two are going to do is heave that big stinking fish overboard. Where'd you get it in the first place, at the fish market? No, I killed it in New York Harbor. Huh? You killed it? Well, you ain't got strength enough to, to kill a catfish. Huh? Must have been dead when you got it. No, it wasn't. I killed it. Oh. I killed it after a terrible hand-to-hand fight. I, I, I'd be fearless Ben Meeker, the oh, greatest oh, whale killer ever sailed around the horn. Killer. Oh, fearless Ben oh, Meeker, who ain't a you, beard of man oh, oh, or... Oh, oh, I can't be, I be, Emmy, shut up! Don't you use that tone of voice to me. I, I said shut up. You, I'd be fearless Ben 
me grain. By gum, I'm all through putting up with your foolish notions. Why, Ben? Don't interrupt her. I'll laugh you one. Why, Ben? Ben, you never dared to. By Gadfrey, it took a man-eating whale to make a man out of me, and I'm through taking orders from women. Now, Ben, I never meant no harm. I'll take my profits and hire me a cook. One that ain't so fussy about clean feet. Oh, Ben, dear. Maybe I have been a mite fussy, but I've been good to you, Ben. And I'll try to do better. Yeah, well, see that you do. <laughs> now I'm hungry. Clean up the dishes and fix Henry and me some beans. Oh, yes, Ben. Can I get you anything else? Yeah. See that jug of cider over there? Huh? Set it over here by me. <laughs> yes, Ben, do you? There's just one more question I'm a one to ask you. What do you do with the whale after Rochester? Oh, I got big plans for this whale. After Rochester, it'll be the biggest load of fertilizer on the Erie Canal. Fertilizer? Oh, nice. Well, young man, that's the story of the thousand dollar haul. Well. And uh, thanks for relieving my dry throat condition. You're quite welcome, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... Uh, Meeker's the name, son. What? Yep. I be Fearless Ben Meeker, the greatest whale killer ever sailed round the horn. Fearless Ben Meeker, who ain't afeard of man or woman. No, sirree. The woman don't live who can tell Ben Meeker what to do, and Is I... Is that you, Ben Meeker? Shooting off your big mouth again? Oh, uh... Hello, Emmy, dear. Don't you, Emmy, dear me, you good-for-nothing old rascal. Carousing all hours while I try to keep her getting hot. Go on, get home, I say. Get home and wash your feet. All right. I'm getting... Well, so long, Mr. West. In any time you want some authenticated historical information about the Erie Canal, just ask for fearless Ben Meeker. Ben? Uh, better make it just plain Ben Meeker. Sloan, Cameron Andrews, Adelaide Klein, and to all the other members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade cast. And now, here is Ted Pearson. Rain, rain, go away, come again some other day. Yes, youngsters have been chanting that ancient rhyme for no one knows how many centuries. And when it rains, all of us try to wish it away because, well, that's about all we can do. We can't improve the weather. We can, however, improve our protection against the weather. Slowly, as centuries passed and man's intelligence grew, methods of protection against rain were developed. Uh, bundles of straw were born as raincoats in the Orient. The forerunner of the modern raincoat appeared in England more than a century ago. After that, cloth was treated with linseed oil to make it waterproof. Oil skin, it was called. And with vulcanized rubber to make the familiar black raincoat of the traffic cop on Main Street. But today... We have rainware made water repellent by chemical treatment without surface coating. Treated with compounds like the DuPont Company's Zeland Durable Repellent Finish, this has a great advantage over the older kinds of rainware in that it offers you style and smartness and comfort, rain or shine. Working with the cumbersome materials of yesterday, the clothing manufacturer was limited by his material. He could give you weather protection, yes, but that was about all. If you look like a circus tent walking down Main Street, well, you just had to put up with it. But today, with chemical treatment of the fibers of the material, the manufacturer of rainware is able to use light, colorful fabrics and tailor them as smartly as any other clothing you wear. Garments treated with z for instance, can be made of fabrics which are also vat-dyed for color fastness and samphorized against shrinking. Garments treated with DuPont z are easy to wash or clean because the soil remains on the surface. 
They resist perspiration and other stains. Ordinary spots except grease can be sponged off with a damp cloth. And DuPont Zeeland is a lasting finish. It can stand repeated washing and cleaning. Reprocessing is unneeded. Modern rainwear, more versatile and much more attractive, is chemically treated rainwear. Zeeland durable repellent finish is one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. With tonight's broadcast, the DuPont Cavalcade takes a summer vacation of eight weeks. Cavalcade will return on August 26th for its 12th season on the air. The DuPont Company is grateful to everyone who has been connected with the broadcasts of our Cavalcade of America program during the past season. We thank them most sincerely. We're very grateful, too, for the many cards and letters you, our listeners, have sent us. You have encouraged and stimulated us to do our best to continue bringing you the dramatic entertainment that you want and enjoy. We hope that upon our return to the air on August 26th, you will once more receive the Cavalcade of America as a welcome guest in your home each Monday evening. for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Voorhees. Our Cavalcade play was written by Priscilla Kent and was based on a story from the book Mostly Canalers by Walter Edmonds. This is Dwight Weiss thanking you for your friendly interest and inviting you to be with us again when we return to the air on Monday, August 26th. Goodbye until then from the Cavalcade of America... Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Maker of better things for better living through chemistry. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.